Here we go. Pew. No, 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 no. Pew. Knock, knock. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's why you have electronic doorbells. Hello. Some cool neighbors. They left us a card and some beer. And let's see what else is in here. Oh, some art. Life is better at the lake. How cool. Super awesome neighbors. We might just have to move in here. We'll see. All right. So after a full week of remodeling, my parents came down from Minnesota, helped us do a lot of demolition, cleaned up the yard, started getting some things prepared for painting and, and all that good stuff. I'm gonna spend a few hours here today and uh, just take care of some of the, some more of the prep work. A nice easy day, but definitely helpful in the grand scheme of things. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going through and refastening the new insulation, again, on the inside of the stud with the staple so that we don't have any follow-up work to do. All right, next step is sanding the paneling. Uh, my mom already got the majority of it done. I'm just doing the top edges um, on the platform and I've got my PPE. Here we go. This right here is one of the biggest reasons I love doing what I do. This line has been going on for at least a mile and they still have so much further than where I turned on this road from. All just to get to work by eight o'clock. You gotta slow down, look around. All right, there is the end of it right there. I don't know, that's probably three miles. The beautiful part of this drive is right here and there, you can't even sit in traffic because there is none right here where the beautiful part is. It's another beautiful morning over here on the lake. I wish I had a little coffee maker. Let me see if I can find my little snake friend over here. It's pretty cold today. I don't know if snakes come out in the cold, but he has a cool little setup here with double entry, a lower floor and an upper floor. He was actually hanging upside down here last time. I actually want to cut that tree down because it's blocking the view, especially from the deck area, but I don't want to really mess with that snake's house because it's a rat snake or it's a black snake. It's not dangerous. They're really common here in this part of North Carolina. But I don't think the Airbnb guests will much like them. So I probably will cut the tree in stages and eventually, hopefully it'll kind of just move out. But I won't do that until I move a lot of the other debris away from the house. So that way the snake doesn't relocate just somewhere else on property. Today we're gonna to be working on the electric fireplace provided by RW Flame. And you can make this project as difficult or easy as you want depending on your skill set and your time and just whatever your preference is. So as you can see here, I'm down to my studs. Now you definitely do not have to go this far, but I'm remodeling this whole house. So this is what I'm working with. 
I'm gonna build my fireplace out just a few inches and then re-sheetrock everything. But again, you don't have to go that far. Let's make it simple. The concepts I'm gonna show you in this video, you could apply to your own situation. So let's go. Now the secret sauce is really all in the planning. The fireplaces come with the dimensions that you need to be able to insert your fireplace. So whether that's into an existing wall or you just wanna hang it on the wall, you don't even have to inset it. Or if you wanna build out a brand new wall, which is what I'm gonna be doing here. But basically you have your studs, I have the framing that I need for the actual box itself and just everything provided here, the widths, the heights. The most important thing is the actual framing around the fireplace. This will be unique to the, your size fireplace. So for instance, I think I got a 52 inch. So that means the back of the fireplace needs to be 47 inches and then it hangs off a couple of inches on each side. But it's all in the planning. Go ahead and you don't need to go this extensive. I did color coding and everything, but I had a lot of time between this project and uh, when I was planning this. So yeah, let's go ahead and build it. first cuts I'll make are for the actual fireplace box just because they're easy simple cuts and I have a bunch of scrap wood here. So those are going to be two 50 inch pieces of 2x4 and then two 17 and a quarter inch pieces of 2x4. Let's cut those. In case you were confused, that gives me the green box. 50 inches, 50 inches, 17 and a quarter, 17 and a quarter. So that 50 inches right there, minus the inch and a half piece of two by four, and the inch and a half thick two by four, gives me 47 inches wide for the fireplace insert. And then that gives me 17 and a quarter for the height of the fireplace insert. Now it's time to do some of this other stuff, but all this depends on the height of my ceiling. So I'll need to get those measurements first. Again, this is a unique situation based off of your layout and my layout, but just for some clarity and so you understand where I'm going, this whole wall right here is 110 inches. I wanna center the fireplace. So if it's 110, half of that is 55. So my center point is 55 inches. So I have that marked right there, 55 inches, dead center. But the fireplace itself is 52 inches, so I need to mark those lines, which I have there, 25 over that way, or 26 from the center line, and then 26 this way, somewhere right there, from the center line, that gives me 52 inches right here in the middle. But then I need a little bit on the side, so I have an actual fireplace wall to inset the fireplace, so I marked my lines evenly. So I have it about 13 inches from the end of this wall over here to right there where I'm gonna build off my wall. Bring it all the way across to about 13 inches off of this wall over here. So let's frame this up. And then that'll give me about a foot from the end of my fireplace to the end of the wall. Same over here. Then I'm going to bring my fireplace about six inches off of this wall. So it's not much, but let's frame that. Okay, here is my top plate, here is my bottom plate. They're both pretty much the same length, but I'm gonna mark on the studs, or the, the plates, where I should put the studs, because they'll be lined up the same on the top and the bottom, you'll see. I'm gonna put one on each of the very ends over there. Then I cut four of these two by fours, 14 and a half inches long, 
and those will rest underneath this box and really support this box and prop it up. Again, there's not much weight going on any of this. It's not really structural, but still, these will help a lot for this box to rest on those. And then the last little bit of framing that I'm gonna do is actually adding this piece of plywood with the fastened two by four, like you can see just like that on the back. And this will be where I can mount the TV. It gives me a lot of space to mess with the mounts and all that stuff, because I'm not sure the exact spot or size or anything. So this will give me a huge surface space so I don't have to use sheetrock screws and stuff like that when I actually bolt this TV onto here. I am all framed up here for the fireplace and like I said before, depending on how much work you want to put into this and what you're looking to get out of it, you may want to start thinking about how you're going to wire your TV and your fireplace. Okay, so I have an outlet right here, which is perfect for just my fireplace. Just my fireplace, I have the outlet right there. Now, if you're not building your wall out, you can always just run your wire and plug it onto the outside of your wall, but you're going to have a visible wire. So to me, the best bet is to plug it in behind a wall just like this with an outlet so there's no wires visible. Same thing with my TV. Once I mount my TV, I can have a hole somewhere here, run the wire. I'm still be, get, trying to get creative with this if I want to slant it to just kind of help guide the wire down to the outlet. But what I'm thinking is I'm actually going to run the outlet and extend it and install another outlet right here behind the TV. So that way I could plug in a Roku, an Amazon Fire Stick, whatever, and the TV, and it'll all be hidden. No wires anywhere visible. So that wraps it up for me today. I'm gonna have this sheet rocked by some other team. I'm getting this whole place sheet rocked. Otherwise I would do this myself. And I'm not gonna put stone on it or anything like that. It's just gonna be sheet rocked and it's gonna be painted. I'm gonna have a sill, TV, fireplace, so. I did add a little extra blocking here just to tie that wall into the old wall. Same thing with here. And then some cross blocking or whatever you call it, cross bracing, blocking, whatever. So it's just all jiggle proof. No cracks in my sheetrock. And this should be as simple as getting my blacks, tying them together, and the whites and the coppers, running it behind this wall and back into here. And I put it in this location on the top left of my TV because the TV will probably slope slightly forwards, leave me a bigger gap on the top. But also, and then I put it on the left so when people are walking through this hallway, you don't see the outlets and the cables as easily. They're way over here on this side. So the combination of those two things leads that for the perfect position. I'm gonna take care of one other little side task today since we couldn't get to the main thing with the shower pan. We did do a main thing with that fireplace framing, but I'm gonna do some outside stuff here. All these pavers that you see here are pretty wobbly, so when you walk down the steps and on the edge, your ankle could twist, you could fall off, and so on. So, I have some construction adhesive for stone. If you did not know, most caulking guns have a cut hole, so you can put this in there, cut it, and then this prong right here can actually go through the hole to puncture the seal. 
My gun is pretty old, but you get the point. There we go. Well, now there's no secret where I shop, huh? <laughs> As most of these remodels go, I end up just bouncing around to a bunch of different projects because I run into an issue that I need to go to the store to fix or go home and research. So right now I'm gonna actually spray down my roof because I have some moss growing on it. And using a combination of bleach and water and a soft brush or vinegar and water, which I'm gonna use here and a soft brush. You look good, right? <laughs> Guys, we have finished week, whatever, week two. That's so it. it's Friday, we're leaving at two o'clock. If you haven't noticed the trend yet, we have a few short days in our schedule so far. Wow. <laughs> but yes. we're gonna go get some Mexican food and enjoy the weekend. So thanks for watching another episode. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>